Being a software engineer isn't what you think it might be. Is coding important? Yes, of course. But is it the most important thing? Actually, not always. What? So this is a graph of what I spend most of my time working on as a software engineer. As you can see, 20% of my time is spent coding, 15% of my time is spent troubleshooting, 10% on documentation, 20% on meetings and collaboration, 5% on design planning, and 15% on on-call work. And then 15% on... Wait, crying? Who put that there? And the reality is, or might I say the harsh reality is, there are a lot of undesirable parts to the job that people just don't want you to know. This is top secret. Right? But don't worry, there's a way to get around those undesirable parts, so stay tuned if you want to hear more. First off, say goodbye to good time management. I can't tell you how many times I've had things come up while I'm working on a feature that pushes the timeline back and causes a lot of friction with both the customers and the product managers. But here's the thing, work isn't like school where there's a hard and fast deadline. Things come up, requirements change, situations shift. It's honestly impossible to get everything done on time. And to be quite honest, if you're expected to still get everything done on time, either you're not communicating or advocating for yourself, or the expectation is that you're working nights and weekends, which that's just not gonna work. No thank you. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, I already alluded to the fix just now. You just have to know how to communicate. Yeah, it's that easy. And I know we as software engineers tend to have a reputation of being awkward and unsocial, but working a crowd and communicating will make the difference between you carving out a good work-life balance for yourself or you working yourself to the point of burnout. If you don't have time to do something, say you don't have time. You cannot do it. Uh, you, you don't, okay, you don't directly say you cannot do it, but you say there, there are reasons, you know, so you specify the reasons why it would be harder or take longer. Um, ask if someone else, you know, if it's important to be done quickly, someone else might be able to take it over. Give a detailed plan as to when you'll actually finish everything. And also tell them what was so important to have the deadline pushed back. Make sure to tell the manager as soon as you find out that things aren't going to be done on time. That way they can work with you to come up with a plan to get things back on track. The quicker you do it, the better. If you tell it, you know, if you get a task assigned the first day and you immediately see that it's not going to be done. If you say the same day, you know, nothing, there's no time lost. They'll just find someone else to do it uh, or they'll give you more time. I've seen brilliant software engineers that are scared to do this. Heck, I was scared to do it at one point too. But it just ends up creating a toxic environment for both yourself and others too. At no job do they actually care about the deadlines. I mean, everyone says they do, but deadlines always get moved. The only important thing is that you talk with you know your managers and colleagues and say when something is doable when it's not you need more time you let them know it's the only thing that matters hey guys this is Pooja from the future speaking of learning how to code if you haven't checked out my kotlin course for beginners i'd highly recommend checking that out we have a ton of features for people that need more structured learning and especially if this is your first language you're learning it has step-by-step -step tutorials with animations practice problems quizzes as well as projects at the end of the course so that you can feel like you're actually learning something and learning something in depth so here's just a little bit about what we have we have some video explanations visual animations object-oriented programming concepts, paste format, coding examples, practice problems, a written coding guide, which is completely free. You don't even need to purchase the course. Just go to the website and get the free guide. You can also ask for help. You'll be a part of our Discord community where we have 7,000 plus members and you can actually go there and ask questions from the moderators or myself. We also do sessions every Friday on this Discord server, by the way. So even if you don't buy the course, check out the Discord server. It's $1 a month, you guys. That's it. And if you don't like it, you can always just cancel, right? Just a little bit about what we learn in the course. We learn about data types, statements, operators, comparisons, constants, variables, arrays, loops, array lists, hash maps, functions, classes, interfaces, abstractions, and lambdas. And we learn the basics of data structures and algorithms. It's not going to be an advanced course, but something that's definitely needed when you're first starting out learning how to program. So check it out. You don't want to miss it out. I've put information in the description below and hope you guys like it. All right, back to the video. Next, getting things done is way more important than writing perfect code. You probably learned a lot of code in school, and while that's important, it's actually more important to get things done. Be a doer. 
Managers won't care if you can write the cleanest algorithm if it never actually gets merged to production. Okay, I can already predict the comments right now screaming at me because I told people not to write clean code, but that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's good to get in the habit of writing small PRs so that you can make incremental changes to the code base. That's all. This makes it easier for the reviewers and it also increases your velocity of making impactful changes in the long term. You should always strive to write clean code, but the definition of done at most companies include implementing the code, testing the code manually, documenting the feature, communicating progress with your manager and the team, as well as monitoring it after it gets deployed, and adding the appropriate metrics and alerting. Even if you change one line of code, all of the above is still required. That's why a lot of people just don't finish things. They assume that finishing the code is the same thing as being done. Okay, the next harsh truth is that on-call rotations are mandatory. They're a necessary evil. Being on call sucks, no one likes it. Basically, you're at the beck and call of any incident that happens on your team for an entire week, and that includes weekends and evenings. During this time, you're expected to work with customers that have problems with the product. You have to troubleshoot the system to see what's going on and even check on any job or service failures. It's just a rite of passage that everyone has to go through. It kind of feels like tech support in a way too, where you have to fix things for customers and fix things on the team. Oh, and you also end up working nights and weekends if an incident happens during that time. So say goodbye to your weekends if you can't bring your laptop top with you. So a good way to deal with on-call rotations is to prep ahead of time so you know how to fix common failures. If there are recurring failures on the team, the last thing your manager wants to do is swoop in and save the day every single time. But that being said, you can absolutely ask for help, especially during your work hours. Help me! You're not expected to fix everything, rather you're the first point of contact. And over time, you'll gain more experience so you'll know what to look for first when you're troubleshooting a certain issue. Okay, so the last harsh truth is temptation to give up when things get difficult. The pie chart at the beginning of the video was speaking the truth. That's not really a harsh reality, but software engineering is chaotic and disappointing at times. And it really tests your ability to endure tough problems. The harshest reality of all is that you have to have a tremendous amount of grit to actually get things done. Just the other day, I made less than 50 line changes in a feature I was working on, but it took me almost two weeks to test the entire thing. I had to run several APIs locally, simultaneously, and spin up a bunch of service bus topics to test my changes. I kept running into issue after issue after issue. First, it wasn't getting authenticated. Then there was some security issue. Then I had an issue with the thread locking. And finally, I had to just go line by line to just check every single value as I was debugging to make sure that I was getting the correct responses back. In the moment, I did want to cry. But the point is, that's the reality of software engineering. It's not a fun game where you just get to code cool things. Sometimes you do, but most of the time it's stuff that maybe you don't want to work on. It actually takes a lot of effort to finish what you started in an enterprise environment. And that's why it's difficult to be a good software engineer. These are just some of the harsh realities that I faced, but there's definitely more. The important thing is to be flexible about learning technology, setting boundaries with your time, accepting some hard truths, and communicating when you think things aren't going well. This will more or less set you up for success in the long run. If you like this video, check out some of my other videos. Why is no one using these three strategies to learn how to code? And what's the fastest way to become a software engineer in 2024? I think you guys will like it. See you soon.